Good evening, everybody. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, next week, it'll be six years since my son was murdered. Did I six six weeks? I meant six years. Um, what a difficult journey it has been. Um, a very public journey on many levels. I didn't begin this journey knowing what was ahead. The day Luke was murdered, I stood up and spoke to the media. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a speech written. I didn't truly really know what I was going to say. But I did say that family violence happens to anyone, no matter how nice your house is, how intelligent you are. It can happen to everybody. And indeed, in that six-year journey, I've, my life has been richer for the amazing people I have met across Australia. Aboriginal women in remote communities, people of, and women of colour, women of disability. My life as a middle class um, woman on the Mornington Peninsula in Victoria didn't seem to know much diversity. But I've always realised that one of the reasons I could be heard and have a voice is because I am white and because I am privileged. And even still, we have one woman a week being murdered. One in three women will experience physical violence over the age of 15. This is still an enormous problem in our society. Six years later, I reflect over that journey. And sometimes it's overwhelming and sometimes it's disheartening. Sometimes you just don't want to keep going. But you do. Every day you get up, and you get up because you haven't got much of a choice, really. But what keeps me going are the inspiring people that continue to work to improve humanity as best we can. Just recently, I've been in the media a little bit more than I have been for a while. I can't tell you the vicious attacks you get as a woman standing up for what's wrong. I never even believed people could say or think these kinds of things. Never imagined it for a moment that I would be blamed for my son's death, that I could have provoked his father into murdering him because I'm not a nice woman. I couldn't believe, and I still can't, that men and women paint me as this feminist Nazi that has to be a man-hater. How ludicrous. How ludicrous it is when you see it written and sent to you day in, day out. Because not one feminist that I meet and speak to and work with in this area has ever said such hateful things. And yet somehow, by standing up for what's right, it means we must hate. It doesn't make sense. But what it must mean is that we are pushing forward. And that backlash and the pushback is because we're making progress. And yet, when I switch on the TV and I see another woman has been murdered, I don't see the progress at all. And I wonder, why are we so blind to this problem? A problem that we all share. It doesn't just happen to other people, it happens to people like us. People in your own friendship circles, your own work communities, the suburbs of where you live. In a pro modern, progressive, wealthy country like Australia, 
It is astonishing that we are still resistant to acknowledging the depth of this issue. What gives me hope, what gives me inspiration are the messages that I receive on a daily basis. People who have experienced horrific problems, situations, violence, and knowing that somebody, hearing somebody speaking out gives them strength, gives them strength in ways that I can't always understand. But whilst I know that I am making a difference for some people, it does give me the energy to get up and keep doing this. I have many positive things to look back on over the last few years. I have learnt a lot. I've learnt a lot, learnt a lot about what human strength we have, the resilience we're capable of, the kindness, compassion and love that we have amongst us. I have met the best of humankind. And the people that sit behind those trolled messages, I don't know where they are. Somehow, I don't see them. So we do have to understand that the nature of the work that we do, because we feel passionate about being part of change, it does come at a cost. It takes bravery and courage to get up and stand up for something that's right. And even amongst your own friends and peers, sometimes they don't have the same vision. It can feel isolating and it can feel very alone. But we're here tonight to listen and learn because we care. Otherwise we'd st still be at home watching Netflix or something like that. So you give me hope, you give me strength. And you give me the potential to create change. I can't get Luke back. And I will live with his loss for the rest of my life. But I can make sure that my life has purpose and meaning and a reason to keep going. Luke's father said, you may think you'll outlive me in this lifetime, but I can make you suffer. Those words haunt me, but they also drive me. Suffer he has made me, but ruin my life he will not. Thank you.